Hey everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. I pray you enjoyed the resurrection series. This is sort of kind of a continuation of it. This is the, the actual kingdom, the kingdom of Christ and God the Father. So we are going to cover the last two chapters of the book of Revelation, the last two chapters of the book of Isaiah. You know, when I uh, took classes in Bible college, my favorite class was the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah has 66 chapters. The Bible has 66 books. And in many ways, Isaiah mimics, as a mini Bible, and when you get to the last two chapters, it mimics the last two chapters of the book of Revelation and has the kingdom. And then we're going to take a look at Daniel, and uh, we are going to, well, let's see what happens. Today is November 19, 2024. Uh, but just remember something before. You, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, boy, there was a song. Before you get to heaven, you got to go through a little hell. Yeah. It's not going to be pretty, people. It's not going to be pretty. What's coming? But Christ said that he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So with that in mind... Let me see here. Where am I going to start? That's the question. Let's start in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah has a lot of end time prophecy in it. People do not understand how much prophecy is in the Old Testament, especially in the prophets. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, the minor prophets like Micah, Amos, Joel. Joel. Joel talks about the sun going dark and the Lord pouring out a spirit upon all flesh. And um, the coming of the Lord. And people don't even bother reading that. Because their pastors tell them, oh, that's a book for the Jews. Don't read that. That doesn't apply to us. We're not Jews. Uh, thank God for that. I think we are Israel. And if you don't know the difference between Israel and the Jews, well, maybe you should take a look at some of my playlists. Did you know that God divorced Israel and with a promise to remarriage in the book of Jeremiah? Oh, yeah. Maybe we should take a look real quick. Now, if you want to look at the whole chapter and read it, because you're going to, some would accuse me of reading verses out of context, and that is possible. You know, you can make the Bible say pretty much anything you want, reading verses out of context. But read the whole chapter of Jeremiah chapter 3. But the punchline is in verse 8. The Lord says, And I saw... When for all the causes, whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. Boy, you'll never hear that in your demon nominational preachers. Never, 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 never. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no. They got they got an everlasting covenant with God. It's not what my Bible says. 
Israel committed adultery. God put her away, gave her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. What's a harlot? It's one of those old English words. It means a whore. Now, why is the Bible talking about Israel and Judah? Well, simple. Because in the days of King David's grandson, or I should say Solomon's son, Israel and Judah split, much like the American Civil War, where you had the North and you had the South. So, if God divorced Israel, but not Judah, doesn't that mean Israel is cut off from the covenant? Oh, absolutely. So, in Jeremiah 31, 31, we read the following. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, God never divorced Judah, but he did divorce Israel. But he's going to make a new covenant in the days of Jeremiah. Well, I believe that was done around 2,000 years ago when Christ at the Last Supper said, take, eat, uh, this bread is my body, this, this wine is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. So, but uh, a lot of people don't want to hear that stuff. They don't want to believe it. Then you got the Hebrew roots deceivers that'll tell you, oh, no, 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 it's not a new covenant. It's the renewed covenant. You know, the covenant that didn't work the first time, you know, the animal sacrifices, the blood sacrifices, the burning of animals, and blah, blah, blah. It didn't quite work the first time because we, we just didn't have it down right. So we're going to try it again. We're going to build a temple and we're going to do animal sacrifices and, uh, yeah, we're going to give it another go. Well, it didn't work the first time. It's not going to work the second time. So, all right. Um, in Hebrews 8.13, In that he saith, A new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So, but what about the verses before that? Let's see. Let's go. We're doing. We're going to do Hebrews chapter eight. Uh, let's see. Verse six. I don't want to make this a twenty-hour study. I could, but but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now, who are they talking about here? Christ. He, how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. I mean, come on, believing in Christ is a lot easier than burning sheep and goats and rams or whatever, you know. Verse seven. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. You know, if the first one had worked, there wouldn't have been a reason to have the new covenant of Christ. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. You know, there is only one group of people in this world where the laws of God are written in their hearts. You won't find it in Africa. You won't find it in Asia. Not in China. Not in Japan. Not in Mongolia. Not in India. Not in Zambia. Not in the Congo. No. Not in Eritrea. Or Nigeria. No. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. What people built all the churches? What people translated the Bible into the common man's languages? Who? Europe. And European descendants in the United States. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, A new covenant he hath made, he, a new covenant he hath made, the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. There's no need for a temple, people. We don't need it. So, Hebrews 12, 24, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Hmm. Wow. Now, a covenant you can make with people while they are alive. A testament, like a last will and testament, a testament does not go into effect. It's like a covenant in a lot of ways. But it doesn't go into effect until the person has died. Did Christ's physical body on the cross die? Was he crucified? Was he buried and raised again in three days? I say so. So a covenant, you make a covenant, it's like a contract. Hey, I got a car, I'm going to sell it to you. You give me $3,000 cash. I give you the car. It's all yours. You don't give me the money, you don't get the car. That's contract is like a covenant. However, if I make a last will and uh, testament, what good's a car going to do me when I'm dead? None. I might say, well, you know, I want to give Joey my $3,000 used car here. And... Uh, I'm going to leave it to him in my will and testament. That is the difference between a covenant and a testament. In Matthew 26, 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Huh. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Remember, last will and testament doesn't go into effect until the testator dies. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the whole world? No. This is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for many many for the remission 
of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of, the, of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So in the marriage supper of the Lamb, and when Christ comes and gets his kingdom, when God the Father finally says, Son, go get your bride. She's ready. Look out, people. All the tares are going to be burned. That will be a day of rejoicing. I am so sick of this world. Uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not totally ready, but I'm pretty sick of this world. I'll tell you what. All right, let's take a look at Daniel chapter 2. I'm not reading these whole chapters because uh, this would be a very, very long study. And, you know, I try to keep them about an hour. No more than an hour and a half. Uh, Bitshoot does not like long studies. An hour I can get away with, but that's about it. All right, so Daniel chapter 2 and verse 40. Speaking of the end time uh, kingdom of evil. And by the way, uh, when you look up the first instance of iron in the Bible, and what do they make iron with iron? Well, back in these days, they were making swords. You take iron... Mix it with uh, carbon. You know, you take a you take a stick or a piece of wood and burn it till it's till it's black and crisp. That's carbon. You take carbon and mix it with steel. I mean, uh, iron, steel, and carbon together make steel. Steel generally is ten times stronger than iron. And you could add other mineral, uh, metals to make the steel have different properties. Perhaps you've heard of a, a high-carbon steel knife. I mean, you can't go wrong with a high-carbon steel knife. You can't go wrong. It might rust. You know, it, it, it might rust. You know, there's a difference between high-carbon steel and stainless, but... Uh, in the 70s, and I'm not, an, I'm not a knife expert. You know, I, I like knives. I've got knives. I've got quite a collection, actually. But uh, a high-carbon steel knife in the 70s is what you wanted. Stainless steel was, back then, was not what it is today. Stainless steel knives are great today. Back in the 70s, I wouldn't own a stainless steel knife. They were kind of like throwaways. They didn't really hold an edge. They were hard to sharpen. Uh, carbon steel, yeah. But if you look at the first instance of iron in the Bible, it's associated with the children of Cain, believe it or not. And Japan was making steel swords, from what I understand, thousands of years ago before the West ever discovered it. And according to them, their legends, the gods came down from the skies, the sky, and taught them how to make steel swords. Matter of fact, their uh, emperor is a direct descendant of the gods, according to them. Shades of Genesis chapter 6. So, you know, it makes you wonder. Now, those of you that think Adam is the father of Cain, well, you know, the Bible records that uh, Cain was of that wicked one. Of. Not like, not similar to, didn't, not followed after. Of. You know, what are cakes made of? What is bread made of? Flour, sugar, yeast, they're made of. They don't follow after wheat. They don't, they're not similar to wheat. No, they are, they are wheat flour. Well, you could have rye bread, but 
you know, cakes are made of wheat. I've never heard of a cake made out of rye, but yeah. So, the children of Cain were the ones that did iron. Maybe we take a look at that real quick. Now, if you read in the, I think it's in the book of, uh, maybe I don't remember what book's in. It could be in Judges or Kings I've, or Chronicles, I forget. But the Philistines, uh, they were ironsmiths. And they had iron weapons or steel weapons, swords, spears. But Israel didn't. Matter of fact, it was like Jonathan and Saul were the only ones that had swords that they'd probably taken from the Philistines. And when uh, Israel had to go to the Philistines to buy an axe head so that they could cut down a tree. Because the Philistines, the Philistines did not want to share that knowledge with them because they were enemies. But in Genesis 4, verse 22... And Zillah, she also bare, had a child, she also bare Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain. Now, if you don't know about the uh, Tubal Cain, he's mentioned in the Masonic Lodge legends. She also bare Tubal Cain. C A I N. Just like Cain and Abel. Tubal Cain, an instructor, he's an, a teacher, an instructor of every artificer art. He teaches people not only how to deal with iron, but you're talking about it was a science and an art. He, and he was an instructor, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. So when you trace back iron, the first mention of iron is mentioned with the children, the descendants of Cain. I find that extremely interested. Interesting. All right. So let's go to. Um, you read Daniel chapter 2. Uh, Daniel's discussing the four major kingdoms of the earth. You had Babylon. You had Persia. Greece. And then we're going to read about the fourth kingdom. And the fourth kingdom is going to be likened as iron, which I believe this is going to be the last kingdom. Now, some people argue and say, oh, well, this is Rome. This is Rome. No, this is going to be Jerusalem, people. This is going to be Jerusalem, the temple, the man of sin, the Antichrist, the beast, the son of perdition. Now, if you want to read Daniel chapter 2, because I'm trying to keep this under an hour and a half or so, go read Daniel chapter 2 by yourself. And I do not have a commentary on Daniel. I've done a couple chapters, but if you ask me, Daniel is the hardest book in the Bible for me. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Bible says that when the end times come, it will be revealed. The book of Revelation, to me, is a lot easier than Daniel. So, read Daniel chapter 2 if you want to read the whole thing. But I'm just going to start in verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much... Uh, as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, 
What is potter's clay? Well, the Bible likens Israel to potter's clay. Where was Adam created from? The dust of the earth, right? Clay. So, and whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. Part of this is going to be part of Adam, and the other part is going to be of Cain and his descendants. I know that's a big pill to swallow, but go with it. Trust me. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of the iron, forasmuch as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, the iron people, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay. People, let me tell you something. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. And I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. If you don't like it, lump it. I do not believe Adam was the wicked one. You can believe that junk if you want. But Adam was not the wicked one. Verse 44. Oh, and by the way, it talks about the ten toes. The Bible talks about, in Revelation, about the ten kings. Every one of those toes is talking, uh, contrasted to the ten kings in Revelation, which we covered in the previous uh, resurrection study. I don't remember what chapter, you know, 17, 18, 19, I don't know. 14, 15, 16, I don't know. Verse 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone, now remember, Jesus is called the cornerstone. Matter of fact, I started a study on the uh, stones, and I'm planning on finishing it. You know, all these doctrines weave together. They, it, it, it's, like a, it's like a piece of clothing. All these fibers are woven together. And when you start unraveling one thread, it leads to others. Christ is called the cornerstone, not the capstone, like the modern Bibles. Uh... For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure." Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. See, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he wouldn't tell anybody what the dream was. But Daniel knew because the Lord had revealed it to him. Verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested the king and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. 
Remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were the ones that were cast into the uh, fire. Remember the furnace? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 7. You know what? Uh, duh, duh, duh. Maybe we'll read the whole chapter. Let's do a little study on the stone first before we go to Daniel. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. And that, uh, so, yeah. In 1 Peter 2 and verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him, what? Believing on him? A stone? Well, figure of speech, people. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Psalms 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the headstone of the corner. Mark 12:10. And have ye not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Now, you know, they'll tell you, oh, Paul is a false apostle. Paul's a false apostle. Don't listen to him. But in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20, we read, Paul writes, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Wow. Hmm. So, yeah. What is the chief cornerstone? Christ. All right, so let's go back to Daniel chapter 7. I guess, we're, should we read the whole thing? Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Yeah, let's read the whole thing. Daniel chapter 7. This is uh, ties right into the... Um, previous study I did on resurrections part I think part three verse one Daniel 7 verse one in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters Daniel spake and said I saw in my vision by night behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea now remember, we're talking about the Sea of Humanity. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So these four beasts are different. Now these beasts are symbols, uh, figures of speech, people. The first was like a lion. What is Christ called? The Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Uh, you know, what is the, what was the symbol of Russia under communism? 
a bear. You know, I think... Uh, I don't think there's ever been a greater persecution of the church than what happened under communism in Russia. They murdered untold millions. Of course, you only hear about the uh, holy cost. You don't hear about the, uh, the millions murdered in Russia. No, no, no. That never happened, they'll tell you. Now, that's just conspiracy theorists like Bob. So, ribs in its mouth and devoured much flesh. Oh, yeah. Verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast... This is, the, uh, this is the end time kingdom that's coming. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceeding, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse, different, from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Didn't we read about the ten, the beast with the ten horns uh, in the book of Revelation in the resurrection series? Absolutely. Verse 8. I considered the whole horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient of Days? I believe this is Christ. Christ has been around for since the beginning, right? And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his Wheels is burning fire. And I believe in the first chapter of Ezekiel, this talks about God's throne. That's a wild book, people. Ezekiel. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. What books? The book of life and the um, and the other book. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. The beast was slain. Didn't we read about the beast being slain? The false prophet and the, um, the dragon? Oh yeah. The unholy trinity? We read that in the last study. Uh, that was Resurrection Part 3. This ties right into Revelation, people. Right into it. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. The lake of fire. It's what we read in Revelation, right? As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, Christ called himself the Son of Man all the time, came with the clouds of heaven. Christ is going to come in the clouds of heaven. We read that in Acts chapter 3. He went up into the clouds. He's going to come back down in the clouds. <clears throat> one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. If you got a king, every kingdom has a king 
Uh, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. 17. These great beasts, which are four, or four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Oh, okay. Well, 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. People, this is the end time beast who's going to make war with the Christians and going to prevail against them, in the flesh anyways. Verse 22. Well, verse 21, I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise and another shall ar arise after them and they shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and laws. Uh, the calendar is going to be changed, evidently. It's going to change the times. Have you ever noticed we used to have B.C. before Christ and A.D.? Anno Domino, which is Latin for Year of Our Lord. Now they do BCE, which is before the Common Era, as if the death of Christ was common. And then uh, CE, which they call the Common Era. Well, I call it the Christian Era, but uh, that's not what the so-called academics do. Have you noticed that BCE, CE? As if the day of uh, the death of Christ is common, the common era. If anything, the death of Christ was anything but common. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Oh yeah, we're going to get rid of the commandments and we're going to have the Noahide laws or Sharia law or whatever law they come up with. And they, the saints, they shall be given into his hand, the man of sin, the beast, the antichrist, the son of perdition, until a time, a year, and times, two years, and a dividing of time, uh, half a year. This is three and a half years, 42 months. We read that in the book of Revelation, 1260 days, 42 months, three and a half years, right out of the book of Revelation. Uh, part three of Resurrections. That's why I'm doing this study, because this is 
I was going to close out that, but I thought about it and says, may as well finish up the kingdom. Verse 37. I'm sorry, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Wow. All right, let's see what we got here. You know, let's do a recap. In Revelation 4 and verse 7, we read, And the first beast was like a lion. Isn't that exactly what we read in Daniel? And the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had, the, had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Revelation 13, 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now remember, the beast is going to be able to overcome the saints. Uh, let's see. Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, let's see. Revelation 19 and verse 20. Remember the beast was cast into the fire in Daniel? Revelation 19, 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Wow. Uh, let's see. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Hmm. Now, in part three of Resurrections, in Revelation 17 and verse 12, we read, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Remember, we, you know, ten toes, ten horns, ten kings. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Hmm. Let's see, Revelation 17, 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, the whore of Babylon, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Huh. And... Those that take the mark of the beast and worship the uh, beast, uh, well, their doom is recorded in Revelation 20 and verse 10. And the devil that, see, that deceived them, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Isn't that what we just read in Daniel? Yeah. You know, the Bible ties, it, it explains, the King James Bible will explain the King James Bible. It uses the same language. When you read, for example, the beast that came from the sea, and then the Bible tells you the sea is people and languages and nations and tongues or whatever, it, it explains itself. And oftentimes more often than not, the first time a word appears in the Bible, 
We'll explain in the context the meaning of that word for symbolism for later on. Really, it does. It's, in, it's incredible. All the modern Bibles don't do this. And then everybody tells you, oh, they're so much easier to read because they don't use those terrible archaic words. Well, you can either learn the definition of a word like harlot or McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Take your pick. Personally, I'd rather learn Bible words than iPhone and McDonald's and Coca-Cola or PepsiCo, you know. So, what else do we have here? Now, remember Daniel, we were talking about the uh, leopard and the lion and the bear. Revelation 13 and verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave his power and his seed and great authority. So this kingdom... Uh, the last kingdom is going to be like all the every all the other kingdoms combined, I guess. That's what it sounds like to me. So, yeah. And then in uh, Revelation 13 and verse 1. Wait a minute. Did I read that wrong? Oh, yeah, I should have read this first. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his heads, uh, upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So there you go. Um, I think I'm going to make this a part one for the kingdom. And when we come back in part two, we're going to do Isaiah chapter 65 and Isaiah 66, Revelation 21 and Revelation 22. And that will be what we have to look for in the kingdom of Christ. So with that in mind, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.